In this video, we're gonna show you how to use the YouTube Studio in 2020. YouTube Simplify. All right, so from your YouTube page, you're going to have an option to go into YouTube Studio. If for any reason you don't see YouTube Studio yet, don't worry, you will, it's coming. Uh, but in any event, we're gonna click on YouTube Studio. That's going to bring us to the dashboard area with a variety of different information on it. We're going to step through uh, the different items that are available on this left-hand side menu and uh, show you exactly what they do and when you might use them. So the first up here is the dashboard. The dashboard is YouTube's kind of jack of all trades uh, where they try to show you some meaningful information uh, on the page. Let's see if we're set at 100%. At 100%, you'll see uh, they got a bunch of different widgets that, uh, in my opinion, don't really fit all that cleanly on this page. But at any event, that's what they're showing us. We've got your latest upload with your analytics. It shows how that video did uh, compared to some other videos. You can jump straight to that latest video's uh, numbers to see where it's at in the comments, etc. cetera. Uh, when it's a, a standard video, this is actually a, um, a live stream, uh, but it does show you a rank of where it stands compared to your last 10 videos. Uh, we also down here, we see latest post. Uh, it shows what I put on my community tab and whether there was any interaction on it. In this case, it's showing a members only post. Um, but whatever your last post is on the community tab, you would see that there. Uh, gives you this news section. This has a variety of different information. Sometimes it'll be Creator Insider videos. Sometimes it'll be one of Susan's videos that never really seem to be in touch with anybody. Um, and then uh, other things, new, news items, made for kids updates. Uh, whatever's relevant uh, in the YouTube world at the moment, you'll probably see it here in the news feed. Over here, you got channel analytics with some quick information. It shows you your subscriber account, what you did in the last 28 days, a quick summary also within your 28 days of views and watch time and revenue, uh, as well as your top videos. You can then drive into channel analytics right down here, but we're gonna see what else is on this page before we move forward. There's that Creator Insider reference. Looks like they have their own dedicated block right now to check out their latest video. Also shows you recent subscribers, uh, ideas. This is just where they put stuff that they've deemed meaningful to you. Now, uh, if you're coming from the old uh, Creator Studio, uh, this next one will be fairly familiar, which is your video list. Now, of course, the video list in YouTube Studio is a little bit different looking. Uh, and here we have it here. It shows you your latest videos. Uh, it shows you a quick view of the status of the video, whether it's public or unlisted or private, whether monetization is on and off and whether you have any issues related to that. Uh, also, it has this restrict restricted section, which I believe they added in December. It says, see if anything is limiting your video's audience or its ability to earn money. So we've heard people talk about shadow bans and we've talked about, uh, you know, videos that get not suitable for all advertisers, etc. This is the area that's going to show you whether or not there's something uh, impacting your, your video's ability to reach people. Uh, it's in some cases you can take action to remove it. It gives you the option to learn more. If you click on that it brings up the help section and uh, gives you some more information there. Anytime you see that more, it's going to pop up the relevant help. Uh, so you can read up on that and see exactly what's going on there. Data published, views, comments, all pretty straightforward things. Uh, this does also break down your videos between uploaded and live. So if you do have live streams, if you are live streaming, you can actually see just the uh, live stream videos that you've done. I think that's a nice feature that they've provided. We also have stories. If you have any recent stories, I believe stories only stay up for like seven days. So you're only going to see the ones that... Uh, have been made within the last seven days. So that's where you would find those here. Now we'll notice when we go back to uploads, we also have this filter option uh, and you can filter by a variety of uh, different items here. If we click on monetization, for example, you can say, hey, show me everything that's not monetized and click apply. And you'll see that it'll show you all the non-monetized videos. Then you can simply X out of that. And that brings you back to your full video list. And again, there's some other options here. 
title. You can actually search for something. If I wanna see just my videos uh, for subscribers, I can click apply and it'll show you all the videos that I've done about how to get more subscribers, how to get 1,000, 10,000, 50,000 subscribers, et cetera. So you can use this filter option to see a subset of your videos, which I also think is very handy. Up here, this isn't normally up here, but this is what you get with the TubeBuddy plugin. Uh, if you're not currently using TubeBuddy, TubeBuddy is the number one browser plugin for managing and growing your YouTube channel. It's available to download for free. There's a link in the description below, or you can go to trytubebuddy.today and get started for free. It's a plugin that you install. Here I am on the Chrome browser, and it integrates a bunch of helpful tools right into your workflow, right on the YouTube page, makes it super easy to get access to those tools while you're working on your content and your channel. So that's super helpful as well. Uh, until you download and install the plugin though, you're not going to see this information up here. Uh, we mentioned uh, in a previous video, they also came up with the COPPA scan that goes in here and actually looks and shows you uh, whether your videos are marked made for kids or not made for kids. My channel, of course, is not made for kids. And uh, that certainly is confirmed by that test. But moving on to the next item here, we have playlists. Uh, I believe the playlist is still one of those things that is kicking you back to the old school version. We see playlists here. We can come over and click edit playlist or sort your playlists by new or old, search for a particular item in playlist, create a new playlist, etc. And then we have this button in the upper right hand corner that says return to YouTube studio. Now we click that uh, and it brings us back. To, this is one of the quirky things about their um, features that they try to kick you back to the old version. As they continue to develop these, these will get better. But as you saw, we were in YouTube Studio. We clicked on Playlist, which opened a new tab. But then when it sends you back, uh, it doesn't close the tab. It brings you back to the dashboard on the tab. And then you end up with two tabs. If you keep uh, clicking into these features that have this, uh, those links that pop back to the old version, you're going to end up with a bunch of tabs open. And that's not what we're trying to do. So we'll close out that tab. We'll go back to where we were. Uh, playlists are pretty similar to what you're experiencing uh, on the Creator Studio or what you've been using the whole time. So next up is analytics. Analytics is a much different beast here in YouTube Studio than it was in Creator Studio. All kinds of helpful information now. They've actually just recently changed this uh, where they give you this big, bold, uh, text to kind of give you a quick snapshot of what's going on. It's saying that in the last 28 days, I'm getting less views than I typically get. Um, I, of course, skewed the heck out of these numbers during the uh, the COPPA meltdown everybody had because those videos were getting like 15,000 views in the first day. Um, so, uh, yeah, this month is probably not going to look like last month. Uh, so, but it gives you this good snapshot, views, watch time, uh, subscribers, it gives you these little indicators which way we're going and it gives you the information that shows you how many less of those or more of those um, you might see. In this quick snapshot, we have these little squares down here. These are actual video releases and you can hover over those and actually see what video it was, which is also a great feature. Um, on the right hand side, we have our real time data, which is showing us what we did in the last 48 hours how many subscribers we have, as well as our recent videos there. And then this is something that they recently changed on this screen. It shows you the top videos um, that uh, uh, are the, the top performing videos. We'll get that out eventually. Uh, based on the time period that you uh, have this set to, which is up in the right-hand corner. By default, it's 28 days, but you can set this to anything. Uh, in theory, that should have worked, but YouTube's having an issue. Let's hit refresh. There you go, YouTube. I knew you could do it. All right. So taking a look here, we see down here, we'll get there. Um, it shows us now the top performing videos in the last seven days. And again, you can do all this 365 days. It'll show you those videos, etc. It also shows you your average view duration that you are getting on those videos and the percentage of that video that that view duration represents. So quick snapshot, good snapshot. I actually really like this change to be able to come in real quick and be like, hey, what's working for me over the past seven days? Where is all my traffic coming from? This is a very quick snapshot to say, yeah, that's that's what's going on. 
Um, now, if you want to get into some more detailed things, subscriber report, for example, all of this information can be drilled into. We have the see more button right here. If you click on subscribers, for example, and click on see more without that popping up, that's kind of awkward. Not, oh, don't scroll over these because then it pops up and all right. So we click on subscribers and then we go to see more. That's going to bring us to basically where most of the analytic uh, information takes place. You'll see, or at least it should have, which it didn't really do here, but um, subscriber source, we can click on up here and we'll go to, oh, YouTube is being funky tonight. Uh, in any event, it'll show you your subscriber source. You can click down here. It shows you where everything came from. We can go to YouTube Watch, uh, which is the individual pages that your videos live on to see what videos are actually driving the most subscribers to your channel in a given time. Um, as we can see here, that video that really changed my channel a couple of years ago, Boom, with the 16,000, almost 17,000 subscribers from that one video. But you can see that all here if you want to look at the graph uh, and uh, kind of see how particular videos have done. You can select those individual videos and it will show you that information there. Whenever you want to get out of this view, you can X out. But one of the things that I do want to show you in this more, see more view is this blue button right here. And this is kind of where all the magic happens. When you click that, it's gonna show you a bunch of different tabs or columns that you can add. If you wanna add average view duration to this mix, you can add it, it'll put it right there. If you wanna add uh, subscribers gained versus subscribers lost, you can grab all of these different items and put them on uh, this screen right here to be able to see those particular stats and sort by the uh, items that are meaningful to you. So. Uh, a great way to uh, slice and dice your data, get an understanding of what everything is, but we're not gonna go super deep into analytics, just trying to show you exactly how to get to all that. And YouTube is having a really tough time tonight because it's almost like it's freezing up. Um, but in any event, if you're looking for something stat related, there's a good chance you're gonna be able to slice and dice it on this particular screen. So yeah, look at this, YouTube is, being unresponsive. Don't they know I'm making a how to use YouTube studio video tonight? Not a good look, YouTube. That's going to be in this video. A lot of people are going to watch it. Thousands and thousands. And you're having, uh, and you're, and, and you're just dying on me. Page unresponsive. We just can't have that, brah. All right. We're going to, all right, let's try this. We're going to open this. We're going to kill that and then we're going to go right back into it that's okay we got you we got you youtube we're going to give you another chance we'll see how you do so far i'm not optimistic because you're not impressing me thus far back into in analytics we go back to this page again same thing this see more see more um feed me see more they all basically bring you to the same place depending on where you are at the time it might highlight a different uh, tab up here, but essentially you can slice and dice and grab the particular um, columns that are relevant to the the way in which you're trying to view things. And again, when you're on any of these, you can still click individual ones and see how they've been performing. All right, so you can have you can spend all day in analytics. I love analytics. Uh, great way to really dig into your your data and see what's going on. But moving on, we have comments. We're going to click on comments if YouTube will let us. By default, it shows you comments that you haven't responded to yet. Uh, and it goes in and shows you, I don't think the comments work the best on YouTube. If I'm being you know, completely honest with you, sometimes I feel like however they organize this stuff, it leaves these little, these little pockets where like people can comment that you never really see. Cause every once in a while I'll come across like a string of comments of people trying to sub for sub, you know, that's like 50 deep that I never saw on the list. So not quite sure. I think this, the filter that they've given us for the YouTube studio is much better than it used to be in creator studio. So I think we're heading in the right direction, but uh, I still feel like there's those little hidden areas, but it does automatically, or you do have the option in your settings to automatically hold things for review and have it filter out stuff that's likely spam. 
um, but this is going to show you individual videos in, in the actual or individual comments in the video that they were commented on. And this is where you can you can heart them up or down. You can reply to them here. And then if somebody does something uh, or, uh, you know, you think it's spam or they're, you know, not being appropriate. You have the option to click on the three dots. You can just simply delete their post. You can report it. You can hide the user from the channel so they can that, that none of their content gets shown. Um, if you wanted to, I don't know that you would how often you would typically do this via the comments, but you can actually pick somebody and add them as a moderator right from their comment as well. So uh, it's a feature. I don't think I've ever used it quite that way, but it's out there so you can do that. So that's your comment section. Subtitles, you can open up the uh, ability to add subtitles to your videos to the community. If people have community submissions, they can um, submit those and you can take a look at um, the submissions they make and uh, use whatever process you need to use to verify whether or not that they have provided a good tra uh, translation and then you have the opportunity to put that um, put that public so you have an, an alternate uh, version of the um, subtitles for another language, which is really nice. And it's great when a community member steps up and does that. That's also something in your settings. You can determine whether or not people can do that for you. Copyright. Copyright is always fun. Uh, copyright, if you have access to it, is going to identify you when somebody has taken your content. Uh, if we look uh, here, this is, these are videos, uh, all cases where somebody has taken one of my videos and downloaded it and re-uploaded it uh, to their channel. Um, and depending on how you feel about that or what you want to do, this is where you would come in and uh, take action uh, against those. Um, for me, typically, if somebody takes some one of my videos 100% and doesn't do anything to it and re-uploads it, I'm going to request that to be taken down immediately. Um, just because, first of all, it's lazy. You you didn't even try. Um, you can't argue fair use if you take something and you literally literally make no changes to it and just upload it to your channel. Uh, you got to respect other people's work and understand that they put a lot of time and effort and money into making their content, and you should never just take their stuff and upload it to your channel. If your first step is downloading it from somebody else's channel, you're probably doing it wrong. Make original content. Or at the very least, if you're going to do compilations or things like that, put some effort in, make it your own, uh, you know, add commentary, add criticism, add something that I that really creates a new piece of work uh, using that other information. But at the end of the day, anybody who owns a copyright has the ability to dispute your ability to use it. And if they don't like you using it, they can certainly request that you take it down. The thing about fair use uh, is that you're going to have to defend that it's fair use. And that can get really expensive with, uh, you know, dealing with some of these bigger companies like, um, you know, uh, you know, music companies and things like that. So just be careful. Try to make original content anytime you can. And don't uh, don't get caught taking other people's stuff. Monetization, depending on what where your channel is at this point, you're going to have different items here. Uh, if you have a merch shelf, you'll be able to drill into merchandise here. If you have memberships, you can drill into memberships here. Uh, super, super chat and super stickers are going to be here. And then fame bit, which is something that I have literally never found any value in, but YouTube still does it. So in theory they would find uh, some kind of opportunity to match up uh, potential sponsors with channels. But I have never gotten anything from fame bit. But anyway, that's where all the monetization items show up. Audio libraries down here. This is YouTube's collection of music that you can use. Copyright free music. Um, and I believe you can just come in here and you can actually download it. So if you're editing your videos locally and you need a little music clip, you can come in here check out the video, the music clips that they have, find one you like, download it, edit it into your video, upload it to your channel, and you don't have to worry about uh, copyright issues with it. So we've got free music and we got sound effects. Um, so depending on what you're looking for, a couple different things going on in there. 
got zombies and jet fire and air nailers and all kinds of funky stuff. But that's where you're going to find it. Now, this is another case where it gives you that, pops you into that old version, tells you to return to YouTube Studio. But when it does, it leaves you on the new tab that it opened. And now you end up with two tabs. So YouTube, fix that, please. Because that's not exactly a good experience. Uh, this is actually a Social Blade plugin, uh, which actually just basically mimics the, at this point, because, uh, yeah, reasons. It's just going to mimic the count that you have out here anyway. So I guess that's a cool feature on their part. But um, settings, general channel, channel settings, uh, US dollars, channel, keywords, etc. Upload defaults. I do find that upload defaults are very helpful. You can go in if you want to have links and things in your uh, descriptions. This is where you're going to want to get all that set up and saved. That way, when you upload a video, it it automatically uh, populates all this information in the description so you don't have to rewrite it or paste it from another video. Also, I upload all my videos as unlisted. Uh, that way, I can make sure that the just the upload process is, is successful. Then I can go to YouTube, work through the title and everything else and make sure everything is perfect before I publish. You can set that as a default so people don't automatically see your videos if you upload from your, your phone or upload on desktop. And then tags, I don't use any uh, default tags as in using the same tags across my videos. I don't really think that there's new, that, that that's needed. Um, and then we have uh, community settings down here. This is where you can identify moderators for your live streams. Um, approve you uh, users to be able to paste URLs and then people who have been hidden from my channel because they don't know how to behave. So, uh, all right. And down here, if you want to, for a limited time, you're going to have the option to go to creator studio, in which case they're like, why, why do you want to go to creator studio? We have this new YouTube studio. That's simply amazing. At least that's why, yeah, anyway. When you do get back into the old studio, if you want to get back, it's back to YouTube Studio. Uh, pretty simple there. You'll also notice that this interface uh, does allow you to upload like you would on your YouTube channel. You see you have the upload option here. Go live right there. And the ability to create a post in your community tab there as well. So that kind of outlines everything in YouTube Studio. If you're looking for specific, if you have multiple channels, you can click on your icon over here in the right hand corner. That's going to show you all of those. You have the option to minimize or shrink down your menu options there if you're looking for more real estate. But uh, yeah, otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you're going to look at the same thing here. If you want to edit a video, you come in here and if any one of the videos you can click edit. You can go directly to the analytics for that video. Look at the comments for that particular one. And again, you'll have other TubeBuddy options here if you download that free plugin. But to edit your individual videos, to get to that edit page, you're going to click on the pencil. This is going to bring you in um, to the actual video screen. Now, this is important because uh, sometimes, and it's, it's very relevant that I actually clicked on my YouTube editor video uh, is that in order to get to YouTube editor, you must first click on a video. Uh, and a lot of things, a lot of sometimes people get that confused. They go to look for the editor and can't find it. You'll see now that we're in a video on the video details page, we're going to see some options here that aren't uh, on the other pages. But when you upload your video, this is where you're going to set all that information. Uh, that you didn't set in the wizard. Uh, there's a video on the channel now how to upload a video in 2020. If you want to see the new wizard format and you haven't uploaded a video yet, it's going to be different than what you might've experienced previously. But here we have the editor where you can click on that. That's going to bring you into YouTube editor. Uh, ch definitely check out this particular video on the 2020 editor to see what you can and can't do. I know the YouTube video editor can be a point of stress for people looking to do specific things uh, in the realm of editing. And the YouTube video editor has a very specific purpose. Uh, and it's not what you might think it is. So be sure to check out this video, the YouTube, how to use YouTube video editor 2020 to see exactly what you can and can't do using this particular editor. But, uh, all the details for that are going to be in there, but that is how you get to it. You come to a video, you click on the details, and then you can get to editor. Again, if you click on analytics here, it's going to show you just the analytics for that particular video. And then we're going to click back here. 
and uh, all your videos are available there. And like I mentioned with the filter and stuff, you can go in there and pull out particular ones. But that's all there is to it here on YouTube Studio. Let me know what you think of the new YouTube Studio compared to Creator Studio. Do you think it is a step up, a step in the right direction to help us manage our YouTube channels and be able to grow and understand what our channel's doing and uh, create a convenient and helpful interface to allow us to get stuff done more efficiently. Let me know in the comments what you think, whether you've been using YouTube Studio and what your favorite part of it is. If there's a problem that you're running into, let me know as well, because as I mentioned, there are still a couple bugs in this thing, and eventually we're going to be stuck using it, so we might definitely want to get those reported. But I appreciate you checking out this video. Don't stop here if you want to continue to simplify YouTube. YouTube. I'm going to put a link up in the corner to a playlist that will show you more YouTube feature tutorials. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and the bell notification icon to see future content. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.